In today's tutorial, let's do family mittens. The title of this video is the size that we're going to be working on in today's pattern. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the family mittens and the intro will be all the same for all four sizes. Then the video will divide off and we'll do the size that's indicated in the title of this video. So let me get you started. Let's take a look at the pattern and how to read this pattern and then the video then will change to the size that was indicated. So looking at the pattern we have four different sizes. We have two to four years of age, six to eight. It jumps to ladies which is the adult large and then men's which is extra large adult. Now in most of the patterns on yarnspirations.com there is color coding when it has decisions to be made. So you can see that there's four different colors and so when you're looking at the entire pattern you will see color coding happening and that's indicating that a decision needs to be made. So let's take a closer look at that and let's see how to read this pattern. So instead of writing four different patterns they've written one and they've put in where a decision needs to be made. So we can see that there's the small, there's the medium, large and extra large. So anytime a decision needs to be made you will see that it's always in brackets. So if you were doing the kid size of two to four years of age you will say chain nine. But if you're working on the men's adult you will say chain fourteen. So anytime a decision needs to be made there will be indications of that within the pattern. So for example here it says join the seam line right here. Do you see that there's no color coding in here? This tells me that everything needs to be done the same no matter what size pattern you're doing because there's no color coding available. So when you eliminate all this extra space that all of these uh, information actually has the pattern is not as detailed as you might think. So when you go to flip the page for example and you see a lot of writing just like so. So let's uh, take a look and we're doing the thumb for example. So you get right here and it says this is only for large and extra large size. So if you were working on the kids versions of two to four or six to eight this you completely ignore. And then it says all sizes then picks back up and then you have to just look at that and just go down. So what I like to do is that I grab a, a highlighter and I highlight which one that I want to do when I'm working on a pattern so that I don't mess up on where I am. So this is actually really kind of an easy pattern to be able to follow and uh, when you break it down and just look at it from step by step it's a lot easier than you may realize as well. So you'll notice that the family is wearing different colors. So she's got here a gold here and then a gray here for a cuff. So you can change it out. This uh, young man has stripes within his and then he has all one solid color and so does this one here. So you can change the colors to match whatever you would like to do and you say that it's version one, two or three and that's just a color version. It's nothing to do with the stitches at all. So you can have a lot of fun. So just because you have a red color doesn't mean it has to be all red. It means that you could either do cuff or or top or do stripes. Anything that you would like to do to make it a little more interesting. So when we're going to start with these we're going to start with the cuff and I'm going to show you all four sizes now and then we're going to then jump to the specific size that today's tutorial is focused on. So for me I have to do my homework. I have to do things in advance so that I understand the pattern and I've done all the cuffs in advance. So I'm gonna get you started and then we're gonna get to the end and then show you what to do. So all the cuffs are done in a rectangular shape and we have to get to a certain measurement that it states in the pattern. So we have two to four, six to eight ladies and men's just like so. So once you get this done you just literally fold it up like this and then you join it with the slip seam. So you can see how much more smaller it is once you fold. So it's not a hard pattern in order to follow. So this here is done by slip stitching. You will spend more time on the cuff on this particular one than you will on the top part of this. And the reason for it is that you're doing slip stitching but I have to tell you as a personal point of view this is the best elasticity you'll ever get. It takes longer to crochet yes but it looks like it's knitting and I have to tell you spend the time and do this. So of the mittens so far this is my favorite cuff of all of them and because it just looks absolutely amazing. I've done hats with this kind of um, a configuration again and I wear it and I most prefer it in the winter and look at the stretch that you can get with that. So it's a really great uh, little pattern to work with. So, so for today's pattern I'm going to use Bernat satin yarn and I'm going to use a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. So let's begin starting the cuff. So let's begin to do the cuffs. We're going to do the six to eight years of age and this is a total of five inches from top to bottom. Notice where I finished off. I haven't fastened off. I'm leaving it there and notice where the tail is where I started. Just notice it's opposite to each other. You want to make sure that you're doing that so that you're consistent 
with your work. So this particular stitch is really quite awesome. It's got a lot of stretch to it and you're gonna notice that most of your time will be in the cuff here. Once we're finished this cuff we're just gonna then fold it over and then seal the deal and the hand or the, and the arm will uh, go through there. But because it's uh, such a great stitch it has a massive amount of stretch to it. So let's begin and a size a five millimeter size H crochet hook and let's grab our yarn and begin. So we're going to create a slip knot and we wanna make sure there's really not a lot of tension to the yarn on this particular one. Because you're working in, in slip stitching for most of this or for all of it, you wanna make sure that you get lots of extra yarn so that there's no pull to it. So we wanna begin and we want to chain a total of nine. So this is the same width of the two to four years just so that you're, you're, you're aware of that. So you're gonna go nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And I know what you're thinking. That's a lot longer than the original looks and it is longer. It's gonna compress. So second chain from the hook, what you want to do is turn it over and get to there. So go for one and two, turn it over, get the back loop only of the chain and I want you to slip stitch so through and through. So it's not single. So in and pull through and through. And I want you to slip st your stitch yourself all the way down the chain. Now in the beginning when you do slip stitching like this you'll notice that your tension may be a little bit off. You may be a little bit more tighter. You gotta learn to relax with this kind of stitch. It looks absolutely incredible and it's worth the extra effort to make it but your tension is really going to depend on you uh, for the entire look of this and as you get uh, further into it you get more and more relaxed as well. So you get all the way down you're gonna slip stitch. Now here's the thing. We're gonna go back and forth until we get five inches long and you're only gonna slip stitch so it's gonna take you a little while. So when you go to turn, normally we turn and we look at it from this perspective but the first stitch is harder to see if you do that. So what I like to do is that you're gonna play in the back loops only so let me show you that. So there's two strands. When it's looking this way the first strand to you is the front loop and the other one is the back loop. We only wanna play in the back loops to create the stretch. So I'm gonna put this back on. So when I look at this I wanna go into the back loop only. So diving in and I wanna slip stitch. So once I get that first one in I turn it fully. It's just a matter of it's easier to see the first one from a side point of view than it is to actually see it if you turn it all the way around. Now it's not normally that hard for me to drop stitches as I go. It just happens to be the way. So you're just gonna move down and going into the back loop only. And once you get more and more this material into the hand that's holding it, it gets easier to do. I always find that starting these kind of projects when there's not a lot to hold on to gets uh, kind of finicky. And so you wanna invest your time into making this cuff because it's gonna be amazing. So when you get to the end, which I'm almost there, we're just gonna turn our work and just keep repeating this over and over and over. So because it's slip stitching, the rows are not gonna uh, go very high. Uh, really quickly so it's gonna take you a while to do it. And so I say that in a tutorial not to scare you but just to keep it this tutorial real. So if we go back the other way instead of turning it all the way I just dive right into the last one again and then I turn and then I slip stitch that first one. First one can always be a little bit tricky but then once you get that done it's just easier. So you move back down the line again all in the back loops. So what I want you to do is continue to do that over and over and over until you get a total height of five inches. And so I have the other one already done here. So this is five inches. So what you want to do is when you're finished, I want you to see where the tail is and where you finished off and I want you to make sure that both of them are like that because what's gonna happen in the next part is that we're gonna just fold it up and then we're just gonna seal the deal and there will be where the wrist goes through. Okay so let's start on the cuff here and we're gonna seal the deal and make it completely go around so that you can get the wrist through. So what we're gonna do now that you have your five inches that you needed you're going to continue with this yarn so do not fasten off and you're gonna continue using the back loops only to do this uh, slip stitch join. So what you're gonna do is just fold them up and on the other side because I had you going into the back loop you're gonna go into two strands on the other side. So this side here we just go into the back loop Okay, like you had already did, been doing all the way along and then you're just gonna fold it up and get the two strands of the foundation and you're gonna pull through that one and that one. So you're, do, you're just doing a slip stitch. So now you got that you're just gonna go into the next back loop on this one here 
and then just reach across and get the foundation chain over here. Just like that. So just back loop and foundation. So once you get used to it you can just sandwich it together like this and it becomes really easy. Because you've been uh, keeping count you should not have any extra stitches left over. You should be able to go all the way across without running out of stitches or without having too many left. Or without having any left really. So continuing want to take your time doing this. Sometimes I rush when I'm doing tutorial work and I have one more to go. So the outside and the outside just like that. And now that's it. So now when you open it up you can barely see that it's even there. It's actually part of it. So take the straggler, lay it down on top and let's move on and I'm gonna turn it up and next time we're gonna play around the center. So as promised we're gonna play around here and we're gonna get our stitches in and this is the straggler of the starting. I want you to just keep it in a position right at this time. We're gonna bury it as we go. So our goal is, is to get 22 stitches all the way around this. So if you go to halfway point there should be 11 and then another 11 here to give you 22. So that gives you a really good indication. So to start we're gonna chain up one and coming into the same area down there you're just gonna just space it incrementally all the way around. So we're gonna count to 11 to start. So let's do 11. You need 22 but we're gonna do 11 to begin. So I've got one and if you leave this straggler down on top you can trap it underneath the stitches and you will never see it. So this is two and three and four it's five six seven eight nine ten and eleven. So I got eleven in. I need a total of twenty two but look where I am. So see where I was here? I've gone halfway around. I need to get another eleven in here before I'm done. So what I want you to do is continue around. Get your eleven in here and because I was trapping that straggler in a position I can get rid of that now and that will never be shown and continue to get until you get your 22 all the way around and do a double count because that count is so important. I'll see you at the end of this round. So once you get all the way around I got my 22 in. I'm just gonna slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet that you started with. Just like that. So do verify that you have your 22 all the way around and because if you don't then your mittens will not be the same size of each other. So let's carry on and let's move along. So the next two rounds are gonna be identical to each other. I'll show you how to do both and we're gonna chain up two. Coming into the same stitch right below is that you're gonna put a half double crochet. So you're gonna do a half double crochet in each stitch going all the way around. So if you had 22 this time is gonna be our last time is gonna be 22 again. So you're just matching exactly what you have. So this is stabilizing your mitt here right at the cuff area. So this is a really kind of a cool concept. I'll see at the end of this round show you how to um, just slip stitch and then I'll get you starting one more round of this. So I'm coming into the last stitch. Now a lot of people think this last one over here that looks like it's a stitch is a stitch but it's not. It's just a reaching over. So once you get to the last one just slip stitch it to the top of the first half double crochet. You should still only be counting 22 going all the way around. I want you to do one more round of that. So just uh, chain up two and then one half double crochet in each and I want you to go all the way around and do the slip stitch and then get ready for the round after that. So please do that now. So I'm all the way back around and now I'm just gonna slip stitch. Okay so let's uh, continue along in this pattern. So now we have to make up for a thumb. So what's happened here is that you see how your thumb builds out? Well it does that on any size person. So what we're gonna do one side's gonna stay kind of flat going up and the other side's gonna jet out and that's what we're gonna do now. So let's uh, begin to do that process. This is the thumb uh, uh, gusset area and so we got three rounds to go in order to make this happen. So we're gonna chain up two and it's just a builder and so in the first ten we're just gonna put one half double crochet in each. So let's count those out together. So I got one and two, three, I got four, five, six, I'm gonna try six again and seven, eight, 
9 and 10. So what we're gonna do now at this point, the next one and the next two are gonna be two half double crochets each. So one and two into the same one and the next one is gonna be one and two. So two into each of those and then the remaining of this round is just one half double crochet. So please just continue right back to the beginning and uh, slip stitch it and I'll get you started on round number two. So right now when you look at it, this side is gonna start jetting out on you. This is the area. These are right or left handed depending on what hand you put it. The thumb is right in the center point so it's not like it's right or left handed. So there's no two different types of mitts for right or left hand. So let's begin the next uh, round. We're going to chain up two and this time what we're gonna do is the next ten will be again a half double crochet each. So let's count those out together. So one and we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So on this round here what we want to do is the next one is gonna have two half double crochets in it. So let's do that. So one and two and then the next two are by themselves. So put the next two by themselves. So one and two and then the next one is gonna be two into the same one and then that's it. So just continue back around to where you started with the slip stitch and I'll get you started on the third and final round for setting the thumb gusset area up. So I'm back again and you can see it's jetting out even more on the other side. So let's begin again. Final round for this for the thumb gusset area. We're gonna chain up two and then we're going to then put in another ten in a row. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the next one is gonna be two halves into the same one. So one and two and then the next four are gonna be by themselves. Okay, so the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And then the next two are, and the next one's gonna have two into the same one. Okay, so that's it for that revolution. Continue around back to the beginning. Join it with the slip stitch and then we'll move on from this. This is the thumb gusset area. Okay, so now I've just got all the way back around and look how it's shaping out on one side. So you can see it's clearly following the thumb if I was that small. And now you're gonna need a stitch marker for the next part because now we're gonna identify where the thumb is. These are not left or right handed. They're uni, uh, uni hand I guess you could say. It depends what hand you wear and the thumb is perfectly in the one side so it doesn't make it left or right. So let's uh, begin. Grab just a, sp a spare piece of yarn just like this or a stitch marker and we're gonna need that for the next revolution. So let's continue. So let's identify where the thumb is gonna be this time and we're gonna need that stitch marker as well. So let's chain up two and remember that doesn't count as anything and we want to half double crochet in the first 11. So let's uh, begin to do that. So let's count that together. So we're just gonna go one and two. Just keep on going and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So now that we have our eleven in, what you need to do is chain two. So one and two and we're gonna start the thumb next. So now that I've done that chain two and now we have to miss the next six. So count over that. So go one, two, three, four, five, and six and go over to the seventh one and I want you to double crochet or to half double crochet into that spot. But before you continue along I want you to place the marker on the second uh, uh, chain. So just right here and I want you to just pull up a loop and going into the second one there I want you to place that stitch marker in that I had you pull out. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna identify that later on when we go to work on the thumb. So just pull up most of it and just put it inside the mitt for now. It will stay out of the way but you need to be able to identify where that is later. The only way to really do it is to identify it with the 
a place marker. So continuing along now just carry on for the remaining of the revolution of just one half double crochet into each all the way around. And you can see at this particular point is that you can um, see that a thumb has been positioned right here. So let's carry on and I'll meet you at the end of this revolution. So let's move up. So in this revolution what we're gonna do is that we're gonna thicken up this area right here and you can either count all the 11 out with you or just just rely on your own stitches. I'm gonna count with you because chances are you're watching me because you need me to uh, follow this uh, across. So let's uh, just count out 11 together. So just double crochet. So I chain two to start with and start double crochet, half double crocheting sorry and do 11. So that was two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And look where I am. The next stitch is right in the chain. So the next two chains are each going to get one half double crochet each. So go one and the, the see the place marker that's the second one of the two chain. So that's gonna get one. And then the remaining all the way around then going forward is that each one of them is going to get one half double crochet all the way back to the beginning. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment and then we're just gonna quickly review and you're gonna do the rest of the top of the mitt up until we start shaping on your own and I'll show you what to do with that. So this is what it looks like right now and so now you're gonna continue just a half double crochet around just one into each until it gets to a certain amount. So you're gonna take your tape measure and this one is four and a half inches before the cuff. Okay so right after the cuff right here you're gonna continue until you get to four and a half inches right here. Okay so the other sizes that we did will be different sizes. So just right at the end of the cuff. So what I want you to do is just continue to a half double crochet around and this is about two inches so this by about four revolutions but just grab your tape measure and just uh, verify before moving on. So let's just uh, continue and get you started and then I'm gonna leave the rest for you and get your four and a half inches done. So to begin again just chain up two and it's gonna be one half double crochet in each stitch going all the way around and then you just join it with a slip stitch at the very beginning. So please do that and I will see you back here just in a few moments and I'm gonna get my four and a half inches done and then we'll carry on with shaping the top of this mitt. So when I last left you I was growing this up. I actually only went three rounds to get my four and a half inches and now I'm ready to continue. We're gonna shape the top and it consists of three rounds to do that. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start off by chaining two and we're going to do one half double crochet into the next four. So let's just do that together. So one and we're gonna do some decrease stitching and we're gonna do two, three, and four and then the next two are gonna be to come together. So put those together. So wrap the hook and into the stitch, pull through. Wrap the hook again going into the very next one, pull through. You have five loops on the hook, wrap and pull through all five loops. So two stitches just became one. So again continue to repeat the pattern. So there's four in a row of just half double crochet. This is three and four and then the next two are together. So wrap and going in, pull through, hold, wrap, going in, pull through, hold. You have three loops on the hook, pull through all three or pull through all five, sorry, it's five loops. Okay, so continue that all, all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up all the way back around. The final two are two together and I didn't do anything fancy. I'm just keeping in those same counts and if your math is right, the final two are the last two which come together. So let's uh, just uh, join with the slip stitch to the beginning and let's start again. So the next round we're gonna get even more smaller. So the next one what we're going to do is that we're gonna do chain up two, one and two and I want you to half double crochet in the first three. So let's do one, two, and three and then the next two are together. So just put the, this one and the next one together. Okay so the repeat pattern for this entire round will be three by itself. So one, two, and three and then the next two together. So please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. No special counting but the final last two will be together if you're keeping in count. So let's uh, continue. We're gonna go one more round and then that's it for the top of the mitt. You see that the hole is getting smaller and smaller. So the medium size then um, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna chain two 
and we're going to half double crochet into the next two. Okay, so just continue along. So just one into each of the next two and then the uh, two after that will become together. So the next one is two together just like I showed you before. So again the repeat pattern on this round here is the first next two are together or the next two are by themselves I apologize and then the next two are together. Okay, so please do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up all the way around the final two are two together and that's just maintaining the counts that are there. No big deal and just join it to the top. So that's it. So you're gonna be left with a smaller hole at the top of the mitt just like you see here. So let's uh, finish this off and I'm just gonna grab my scissors and cut this yarn and I'm cutting it long enough that I can use it for a sewing strand. So what I want to do is just pull through the loop and I wanna get my darning needle already, my tapestry needle. And I'm just grabbing the end and my needle and what I wanna do is that I wanna finish off that top tip area and so I'm just feeding it through now and so I'm just gonna lean it up so I can see it here and I can see the holes and what I want to do is just kind of just going in and out of these stitches. So going in across and pull it and I'm going to pull it snug at the end of the revolution after I get around it. So I'm just going around into every stitch and I'm just gonna tug on this and pull it tight like a clothesline. And once I'm back at the beginning all I can just do is just hold it and just pull and this will bring it all together for me. There you go. So now it's nice and tight and now I wanna go over diagonally. So right over the top and get the other side and all you're just doing is securing it in making sure that it's not gonna pop out on you. And you know a child is going to be using the tips of their fingers um, when they're grabbing things. So you wanna make sure you take your time with the top. So let's uh, be able to hide in this loose end. So how you get rid of it is this you're gonna go in and you're just gonna feed it through a loop like this and it'll lock onto it and then you're going to go in and out of the stitch work three times. So go one and going in a different path but in the other direction for two and then back from the other direction and through a different path for three. So in and out three times and then you can safely cut that right to the project and you'll never see the ending of that strand. So now we're left with the hole that is for the mitt here. You can see it's nice and curved up here and what I want you to do is that we're gonna just fold it this way and get it ready then for the next round. So let's get ready for the next round. I want you to upside down this thing. So I want you to be looking at the top here and this is the cuff away from you and I want you to be looking at this place marker because that's where we're gonna go. Let's start our yarn and I'm gonna show you a deviation technique than what is shown in the pattern just so you email me and you say that well that wasn't written in the pattern. Well I'm telling you right now it's not. So what I want you to do is that I want you to go into where it's marked right here. Okay and I want you to where it's placed. So now that the stitch marker is out I'm going to chain one. Sorry I'm gonna fasten on with a slip knot slip stitch, chain one and I'm gonna single crochet into that same spot. And I'm gonna go into the next one which is the next chain that you had and I'm going to slip stitch or it's going to single crochet. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. So here's what I, I have for you. This is a deviation. So right now our next stitch is right here. But the problem is, is if I go there with a half double crochet watch what happens. You end up with a gap in your mitt right there. So what I'm gonna tell you to do, this is a deviation, is that I wanna tell you to do a two together. So see this uh, post right here? Wrap your hook and go around that post and pull through. Then go to the first stitch. Wrap it and then go. And so all you're just doing is putting these two together so it'll pull together so you won't get that gap. So now continue along on the on this side here. You're just gonna go and then you're gonna go until you run out of stitches on the other on the other part of the stump. But I want you to do the thing that we just did. I'm just gonna tuck this tail in and get rid of it later. Uh, what I want you to do is put the last two together on this on this one here too. Okay, so here's the last one. So what I want to do is go into that one and pull through. Okay, then I want to go into the side right here and pull through and then pull through all, all of them. And that just locks that in to make sure that there's no gap. And then I want you to join to the first single crochet. Just like that. 
So now it was kind of a cheating technique but it gets rid of any holes that may exist when you jump over like that. So let's carry on and let's move on to round number two. So let's carry on and we're gonna chain up two and we're gonna place one half double crochet into each uh, stitch all the way around. So just one into each. So in this case there will be a total of eight stitches going all the way around. This loose strand is just the straggler hanging out. Let me just get rid of that now before you uh, think that it's falling apart. And now I'm just gonna carry on. So I'm just gonna do one half double crochet into each. There should be a total of eight going all the way around. And then what we're gonna do is that I'm gonna show you how to measure this because now you have to keep on doing this until you get to a certain amount. And I'm gonna see if I can look away right now and see if I can determine what that is. So it's gonna be one and a half inches long. Okay, so just join it to the beginning. So what I want to do is grab my tape measure and I wanna keep doing this half double crochet till it's about one and a half inches long. So measure from here, okay. And just go for one and a half inches. So you can see that it doesn't have to go very far. I might just do one more round and then I'll show you how to close off the top. Okay, so now that it's long enough for me, what I want to do is that I wanna finish off the top and finishing off the top is really quite easy. So we're just gonna do two together um, stitches as well. So we're gonna chain up two and then put every two together. So just coming back in and just wrap the hook and pull through and just go to the next one, wrap the hook, pull through and then pull through all five loops and continue to do that all the way around and because there's eight of these stitches here in this thumb is that you're only gonna be able to do this four times because eight divided by two is four. So continuing along just continue to grab and you're gonna notice this is gonna make the hole nice and tight near the top of the thumb but we're gonna have to use a darning needle in order to finish that off. Okay so that's the last one. So then I want to join it with a, a slip stitch to the beginning. So I'm gonna grab a darning needle now and I'm gonna show you how to finish this off because there is a small hole that's left. And so just uh, cut this extra longer than you normally would. And I want you to pull that through. And we're gonna use that strand. Let's get rid of this string. Let's use that strand to close in off the top of the thumb. So all I'm just gonna do is just work my way across the top of the thumb just crossing right over the top. Again this will probably be a used area of the child's uh, mitt. So you do wanna take extra time. Once you're satisfied with it just again tie it in that little small little knot just by inserting it through a final loop. That'll lock it and then go back and forth in the edge of the thumb three times. So one and two and what I want to do is just go one more time. So just bear with me for a second. It fell off my uh, my darning needle. And then just continue to go one more time. It's worth the extra effort. So don't, if you try to bypass steps, sometimes you regret it later. So this is how you would complete a six to eight year old mitten. You can see that it looks really quite cool in the end and I'm actually pretty happy with it. And uh, Here's the other version. I made the thumb way too big on this version but um, you can see that the other version is slightly smaller when you compare the size of, for the height also for the thickness as well. So you see it's a lot more different than each other. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. Have a great day. Bye bye.